guess what we all learned at school were, uh, was the technicalities of painting. How, how to paint, how to paint in oil paints with underlayers and gesso and brush strokes and how to glaze it properly. Um, and I learned how to paint and I painted and I painted but I found it so frustrating because you take an image and you reproduce it on your canvas. But then it just still looks like paint. How do you use the paint in a way that makes the paint tell a story? And so I started playing with paints and oils and different oils and why only use linseed oil? So I was playing with olive oil and baby oil and car oil and different chemicals thinners, um, different strengths of chemicals and um, and so I, I, I kind of bruise the surface in a way and I paint it and then I take away the pigment using these chemicals or I lathe it thickly with lots of oils and then I mix it with liquid so it dries quickly so there's this great tension between the drying times and that would creates the wrinkles and so these figures that I'm painting their textures are quite abused and then once they're very dry I might sand them away, scratch them away, erase them completely and start over again and so it has this double glazing layer of paint and I think that's what's very important for me is that the quality of the paint tells more of a story than the subject matter. The subject matter is really secondary. A lot of my women look very ugly. People are taken aback by their strangeness. Um, very often I paint the woman and they look so clean and serene and pretty. And then comes the thinners and the paint is moved and the paint is squashed and the paint is scraped and their faces are just washed away and distorted. Almost like the mask is being pulled away. And within that ugliness there's a beauty and it's often in the eyes or in the gesture of an arm or the fingers. There's a femininity that is never lost despite the ugliness that is punished on them. They retain their composure. <laughs> 